Tom Rivers, ABC News, joins us right now. Uh, Tom, I'm looking at the rundown here, and it looks like uh, some of the things that we thought we knew for sure yesterday, now the government from Malaysia tells us, well, not so sure. Uh, well, now what? Exactly. Well, you're talking, I guess, specifically about one of the two comm systems was a shutdown before the last uh, voice communication or not. I think at this stage of the game, we got to take a half step back and say right around the time or near the time. And uh, basically, would if it happened before the voice contact, you'd have to infer that uh, maybe the person uh, making the uh, the uh, final good night to uh, Malaysian air traffic control was uh, complicit or was being coerced into doing this. We don't know, but it is important. And now it's it's it's, it's pretty muddy now. The the actual you know down to the minute sequence during that critical time period. Yeah, they seem to have, uh, Thomas Dampon Jr. here, thanks for joining us. They seem to have a real problem, uh, the Malaysian authorities, uh, with information control here. It seems that there's nothing worse, as you're probably familiar with, in the media and having to retract. And uh, yeah. this is not the first time this has happened with them. No, I think I think part of the problem is, one, you know, they're, they're probably, uh, you know, it isn't... Uh, a situation where they've done this before and on this scale. Right, so, right. Yeah, but, but, and then there's so many cooks involved and some great experts out there, too, and they're trying to, maybe the problem of filtering it out and disseminating the correct stuff, the stuff that's nailed down as opposed to stuff that may end up you know, being a false lead, et cetera, et cetera. But, yeah, you're right. Uh, you're controlling everything and then getting the precise language out into the public domain uh, it's not textbook. Uh, right. Tom Rivers, is it is it appropriate to now describe the investigation as a criminal investigation versus a uh, an accident or or incident investigation? Well, they're certainly you know talking up the human dimension they have now for a couple of days. Uh, yeah, so your odds are changing by the day if you want to look at it that way. Uh, mechanical doesn't seem to be in there, but you know I guess you could still say it's on the table. But uh, today, not a whole lot coming out of this presser. It's still going on, by the way. But uh, they're talking now about uh, various countries kind of using their assets on their areas. China, for instance, could uh, employ 21 satellites to see what, what they can find, radar tracks, uh, recordings, et cetera, et cetera, aerial searches, nautical searches in some cases. Um, for instance, uh, Australia. Uh, they've just started uh, sweeps of their area, which, you know, that's that's good thing, but they say it's going to take weeks to thoroughly go over 232,000 square miles. And even if they're over the right area by then, you know, what debris may be on the surface? Big question mark. They may never find this thing. Well, Tom, any further leads on whether this plane took that northern track or that southern track? I mean, that's a big, big yeah, deal. But if, if Australia's in on it, they must. There must be some intelligence that suggested headed south. No. Well, yeah, but every, yeah. I still keep seeing reports about potentially being in Pakistan too, which isn't exactly around the block from Western Australia. It's a shame, you know. They're saying all this arc. Well, we, you know, as in layman, we look at this thing. And go, okay, it's a big arc. Why can't you kind of, you know, get crosshairs and say, well, what do you think? It's in this part of the northern arc and maybe discount other parts of this but boy that's a that's a large chunk of territory 26 countries now involved in in searching and uh, trying to get their best expertise on this in their area china for instance has gone through the background checks of their 150 354 people on the plane they say nothing has shown up uh saying anybody has any known terrorist links and uh you know you're doing the human dimension there as well as the technical searching uh, one of the countries that uh, is joined in the search is France, and my understanding is that the French have a pretty good uh, track record in this because they had to go through that search yep. for the uh, Air France jet that crashed in the Atlantic Ocean. How is this search different than that search, though? Well, I mean, there's, you know, at least you, you had a track to follow there. Uh, again, it was very difficult. It was so it was so deep. But no but one they, had sh no one shut off the uh, tracking information or distress signals there, right? Exactly, exactly. So you know, they were a, they were a little. It was an easier easier uh, search there, but it was still incredibly difficult. Uh, this one, it's you know, if it was a needle in a haystack uh, on the French plane, this is like a needle in ten thousand haystacks. Um, where is it? It could be in Antarctica. It could be in Kazakhstan. Jeez. Um, who you know? Who knows? Yeah, I think this has been a big eye opener. This tragedy for a lot of folks who watch Twenty Four and these spy movies who are under the assumption. I saw this during my time in the Secret Service. People think. 
what people's perceptions of what government can do and what they actually do are usually, uh, you know, totally disparate thoughts. I think everybody thought there was this global radar system. How could we lose a plane? And I'm even seeing it talking to people, uh, you know, on the street and, you know, mm-hmm. friends of mine. They're, they're stunned that we could miss a 777. Well, exactly. And, you know, I, and there's, I guess there was a, a package that uh, airlines have, have, can sign up to and pay for. And right. have it, you know, constantly tracked. And, you, and the hardware, I guess, is in the plane. Yeah, and this is one of the things you learn about these stories. It's in there. You might want to say, I'm going to opt out because that's going to cost, I don't know, 1% of the ticket price. So I'm not going to even, I don't want that thing. Yeah. But uh, if, if it was mandatory, then we wouldn't have to uh, go down this kind of a story in the future because, Regardless, we would know where these things are and precisely know the location, uh, you know, regardless on what may cause it to go down. Tom Rivers, are you hearing, uh, really quickly, we're almost uh, out of time, but are you hearing from your contacts with American authorities that they are extremely frustrated in yep. this, that, that they, of course, it would have been much different if they had had control of this search from the beginning? Well, again, I'm, I'm hearing a couple things. I'm certainly hearing that. and uh, But, again, I also heard yesterday that uh, apparently the FBI was contacted on, on day one. So I guess behind the scenes, uh, contacts were made. But, uh, no, there is frustration out there. And you're hearing it from the U.S., you're hearing it from China. Uh, and uh, it's, it's difficult. Malaysia has to deal with it. It's, uh, it's something they don't want to do, but uh, it, they're the lead. And everybody else has to pour in and help them out, and that's great. But as we said at the top, trying to work through the filters, and get people working in the right areas in the most productive manner. Uh, maybe not uh, not the easiest thing to do, but uh, there's been some glitches along the way. Tom Rivers, ABC News, thanks for joining us this morning on this very frustrating story, obviously for the families involved, but also uh, for, for journalists who are trying to cover a story that has so many moving parts. I know that it's been a challenge for you. Well, it's, it, it's going to go on day in, day out. I'm sure we'll, we'll be talking again about this. All right, Tom so. Rivers, thanks a lot.